can't get off punches. Oh, a beautiful lane. Down goes Mike Tyson's journey sparks a flood of memories, triumphs, powerful knockouts, controversies, and setbacks. But can today's champs even come close to reaching the unbeatable standard Tyson set? Only time will tell if any boxer can step into Tyson's shoes and match his legendary legacy. Absolutely attacked him. Watch this. Bangs him right back. Tyson was like a tornado in the ring, taking down opponents left and right and stacking up wins like a pro. He had his fair share of tough fights and setbacks because even the mighty have their moments. No one failed more than I did. I deserved all the credit I received. Nobody's seen more than I've seen. In the world of fighting, everyone wants to maintain a spotless record with zero losses. Some fighters face their first defeat, learn from it, and bounce back. On the flip side, some enjoy victory after victory, believing they are unstoppable, and then, bam! That first loss slams into them like a plot twist, flipping the script of their entire career. It is the same type of drama that unfolded in the life story of the one and only Mike Tyson. Into it. We're in the Tokyo Dome. It's in the air. But it's not that they're not into the fight. It's just that they don't seem to react the same way they do. You know, give you an idea. The stage is Tyson faced a major roadblock in February 1990 in his 38th professional bout. Enter James Buster Douglas, once seen as just an average boxer. Look at them as they exchange here in round one. Douglas shocked the world on February 11, 1990 at the packed Tokyo Dome. This event became the most jaw-dropping moment in boxing history, with thousands witnessing it in the arena and millions watching it live. Mike walked forward trying to get a comfortable close distance, but Douglas stood firm, not budging an inch against the champ's fierce attack. The challenger started hitting Iron Mike with strong jabs, which quickly broke the man's angry temper. Douglas himself started to go on the attack and gradually lost his fear of using combinations. The second and third round saw more of the same, which indicated that Tyson was going to have a very tough fight. It was obvious that Douglas was giving the performance of his life as the fight went on. Tyson's fight became worse in the fifth round when Douglas hit him precisely in the eye, but despite the injury, Tyson had a chance to win. He delivered his signature uppercut in the eighth round. Douglas collapsed and managed to get up but did not fully recover. James Douglas was possibly the only one prevented from being knocked out by the bell. The referee warned Tyson during Douglas's countdown because he didn't get back to his corner right away. Because of this, the referee's countdown was postponed, allowing Douglas more time to recover. In the controversial bout, Tyson supporters thought Tyson was unfairly denied a knockout victory. Douglas stunned Tyson with a powerful uppercut and a series of blows in the 10th round, which resulted in an impressive knockout. Tyson tried to stand up, but he wasn't able to do it in 10 seconds. Second, Tyson was unsteady on his feet. Douglas won with a vicious knockout, which has since become known as one of the biggest boxing sensations in history. However, one has to acknowledge the reason behind this failing match. Tyson's carefree approach to his training and exercise routine, along with his frequent partying and unhealthy lifestyle, contributed to this setback. Most notably, his boundless confidence in his invincibility played a pivotal role in the defeat. It was like flying too close to the sun with wings of wax, and Tyson's overconfidence melted away. The fight in Tokyo divided Tyson's career into before and after. After the Buster Douglas defeat, the aura of an unbeatable fighter was irrevocably destroyed. Tyson managed to hold four more fights, winning all four of them while preparing for his next fight with Evander Holyfield. Mike became caught up in a famous scandal that led to a rape charge and a prison term. But this was not going to stop Mike. After his release from prison, Iron Mike won four more victories in a row, reclaiming the titles of WBC and WBA world champion. Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield's fight was officially announced, and guess what? The Tyson-Holyfield bout turned into the highest-grossing boxing match at the time. Nobody. Mike Tyson weighs in at two. Nobody thought Holyfield would succeed. Bookies placed bets at a ratio of 25 to 1, with many confident that Mike would easily defeat Holyfield in the opening round. The fight took place on November 9, 1996. With a barrage of blows, Tyson charged at Holyfield, but Holyfield skillfully blocked and counterattacked. The fight became a real meat grinder in the third round, with physical preparation and stamina deciding the outcome. 
Holyfield's mental toughness and pace maintenance seem to catch even Tyson off guard. Despite his lack of prior experience in this area, Tyson got exhausted as Holyfield applied his talent in the clinches. Evander appeared to be controlling the battle with his quick combos. Mike launched strong uppercuts and short left hooks in the fifth round, going back to his typical style of close quarters fighting. Holyfield handled them with ease, and this was the tipping point. Tyson had frequently relied on aggression, but this time his opponent withstood the onslaught and returned strong blows, perhaps causing a psychological breakdown. Mike had no idea how to beat an opponent like that. Holyfield downed Tyson with a left hook to the chest in the sixth round, but the referee called it a knockdown. It was discovered after the fight that Tyson's left eye had been cut as a result of Holyfield's headbutt. Rounds are crucial. Corners can either save you or lose you. Another powerful head-to-head -head clash occurred in the seventh round, causing Tyson to scream in pain and have his legs collapse. The referee counted this headbutt from Holyfield as unintentional. Tyson persisted and kept looking for an opportunity for an attack. Holyfield is demonstrating once more that he has always known what tools to bring to a fight. Check this out. Evander Holyfield rocked Tyson with a solid right hook. At the end of the 10th round, Holyfield delivered a devastating blow. Instead of playing it safe in the clinch, Tyson went for revenge and faced a counterattack. The referee stepped between the boxers 35 seconds into the 11th round, signaling Evander Holyfield's victory. History had forever been changed. He became the third world champion to break Muhammad Ali's record. The boxing world acknowledged its new heavyweight king. There was a call for a rematch, even though the referee said the headbutts were unintentional. In June of 1997, Tyson and Holyfield fought each other again. It was an even greater deal than the previous match, with $100 million in revenue. The bout was stopped in the third round. Tyson bit Holyfield on both ears and was disqualified for his insane behavior. It turned into one of the most controversial matches in contemporary sports. Yourself at all time. Any questions from the challenger? Chief second. Let's get it on! Enjoying the video so far? Make sure you smash that subscribe button to show us your support. British star Lennox Lewis had to defend against a boxer some deemed one of the most dangerous heavyweights on the planet. The fight took place in Memphis, Tennessee's Pyramid Arena in June 2002. Tyson was not at all his best by then. It was his final attempt at a boxing comeback. Lewis's reach and height prevented Tyson from getting close. Lewis concentrated on landing clean shots, tying Tyson up in a clinch every time he came too near. Lewis was more convincing after the second round, hitting more punches and seemingly reading Tyson's moves effortlessly. Tyson was visibly tired out as the rounds went on, and he threw fewer punches. Lewis hooked Tyson at the conclusion of the fourth round, and he went down. Lewis felt like the owner of the ring by the fifth round when Tyson began to show signs of exhaustion. Lewis dominated the fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds with long-range strikes. In the midst of the eighth round, Tyson took a hit from Lewis's left uppercut, causing him to squat and resulting in a knockdown. Lewis sent Tyson down to the floor with a right cross, and the ref counted to 10. The referee waved it off, calling it a knockout. That's the end of the show. One small effort, the overhead shot, terrific bomb by Lewis. They escorts Mike Tyson to the canvas. And Tyson in an attempt to make a comeback, he squared up against Danny Williams in July 2004. At the start, Tyson dominated the first two rounds. The third round was even, but Williams delivered some strong smashes. Tyson caught Williams off guard early in the fourth round, but the British fighter recovered. Williams unleashed a barrage of combinations with just 25 seconds remaining in the fourth round. Tyson struggled and was suddenly knocked out in the fourth round. It came to light following the bout that Tyson attempted to fight while just using one leg, as he had torn a ligament in the opening round. That and the fact that Mike Tyson just got tired in the fourth round. He just flat On June 11, 2005, a year later, Tyson squared up against Irish boxer Kevin McBride. Tyson had won the first three rounds, but he was getting tired, and the early momentum was slipping through his fingers like sand. When Tyson attempted to break his opponent's left arm in a clinch during the sixth round, the referee warned him against it. Not long later, he intentionally cut his opponent's eye with his headbutt, earning him a two-point deduction. He shocked everyone by quitting the match before the seventh round, giving McBride a technical knockout victory. After his retirement, Tyson acknowledged that he had entered the fight only to get paid, claiming that his enthusiasm for the game had faded. Even with the losses, Tyson's reputation as one of the best heavyweight fighters in history remains. 
At the 2005 WBC convention in Las Vegas, Tyson became the youngest world heavyweight champion and had his fastest knockout recorded in the Guinness Book of Records. One of the most exciting and deadly fighters in history, Mike Tyson had a devastating conclusion to his career. Leave a comment with your opinion on this.